Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today I have another donation to feature on the channel here. And what we actually have is the ThinkPad T410. Now this T410 was generously donated by YTGuy2010, and we can make some interesting comparisons when we place it against the T400, which I have right here. Now if you want to learn more about the T400, I will leave a link right up here for you to go and check that out. In the meantime, let's go ahead and compare these two devices side by side because there is a fair bit to talk about. So the T410 that we have here was originally built on January of 2010 and they sold these things up until July of 2011. Now, looking very closely side by side, we can see that there has been some changes to the overall housing and construction of the device. Several infrastructure changes were made to essentially produce the T410. The first that you'll probably notice for the keen eye is that this top palm rest is actually all one piece, where on the T400 it was split into two pieces and required a bit more of parts removal. The trackpad has been redesigned with the design that it would essentially stay with until it was superseded later on and certainly gives you a lot more area. The buttons have also been redesigned for the track point, but the track pad buttons remain essentially unchanged at the bottom. Ports and features have been also updated ever so slightly in terms of their configuration, and we also see the button cluster up here change ever so slightly as well, versus kind of the older style that we would see over here on the T400. Besides the design housing, we did have a series of other changes. The T410 features NVIDIA for dedicated GPU options. If you had the Optimus set up, it would handle up to four displays with a Mini Dock Plus Series 3. The 410 displays were also LED backlit. Unfortunately, the T410 lost its Ultra Bay battery support. There was also a T410i variant, which I don't have here today, which essentially was a budget version of the T410. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and move the T400 back to the shelf. And again, if you want to see more on that, then check out my video on it. And let's focus on the T410. So the T410 once again has that 180 degree hinge. That means this thing is going to lie perfectly flat and allows us to take a good look at the 14.1 16 by 10 ratio display. So this is a 1280 by 800 panel or a 1440 by 900 panel. Those are your two options on this. Inside for CPUs, you had Core i5 520M, 540M, and 560M or the i7-620M. All of those CPUs had the Intel GM5700, and there were two NVIDIA NVS3100M options, one with a 256 card, and one with a 512 megabyte card. RAM was a maximum of eight gigs DDR3 PC3-8500, and was divided across two sticks, or two DIMM slots. Other things to note are actually the battery options on this. This is one of those interesting little quirks of this machine. So the battery options on the rear from the documentation that I can find essentially came in a six cell 57 watt hour variant, which got you from three to six hours. You had a nine cell 94 watt hour variant, which you see here. And then you also had a nine cell slice, which could go on the port on the bottom here, which would give you an additional 94 watt hours. So there was a lot of battery power that you could plug into this thing. One of the other interesting parts though, is that we can actually go ahead and take a T430 here that I have off to the side. And we can actually use the T430 battery in the T410. Now this is the case as far as I know for the T420 and as well as the W series up until the W540. The W540 battery does not work. But it is really nice to see that if you had a fleet of these devices even across generations the batteries would continue to uh, 
be interchangeable, which is pretty darn slick. Now, I won't bother listing all of the batteries that can fit into this, but those are the main types that you would be expecting to see on such a device. So with all that being said, let's do a quick tour of some of the ports and other features on this machine. Starting on the front, we do have the display latch and a full-size SD card slot. On the left-hand side of the machine, we have exhaust, VGA, a Ethernet port, full-size display port, a cluster of three USB 2.0 ports, and then the place where the hard drive will go. Along the back, we have a power plug and our 56K modem. And then on the right-hand side of the machine, we have a Kensington lock slot, Firewire, USB 2.0 always on, power delivery, your Ultra Bay Slim, a headphone microphone combo jack, eSATA, and then of course, a Express Card slot. And that Express Card slot, yes, is compatible with the ThinkMods adapter, which I have featured on this channel. If you want to know more about that, click up here. Last but not least, we have a Wi-Fi kill switch in the corner. When we open this device back up, we will also notice there are a few optional features. We do, of course, have the ThinkLight, which was standard. We have a fingerprint reader, which was an option. And I believe all of these were standard with web cameras, but if you see one without, then you'll know that it was an option as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and disassemble this of its main components and see what it looks like on the inside. To do that, it'll be a trivial matter of a Phillips screwdriver and then just removing all of the components. First things first, of course, is to remove the battery and put it off to the side. After that, we can go ahead and start to remove a few other pieces, even without tools. So this is the Ultra Bay being ejected. We'll put that over here. With the Ultra Bay ejected, the next thing that we can do is remove the screw that holds the hard disk drive caddy in place. In this case, it is a solid state drive that's been installed by a YT Guy 2010. So we can just yank that out. And uh, not a lot of people know this, but if you've ever turned on a ThinkPad and it smells bad, it's actually these plastic rails on the hard drive caddy. They age and they stink. So if you're trying to figure out why it smells like maybe someone was smoking something really bad around your computer, they might have been, but more than likely it actually has to do with these rails um, developing a bit of an odor and it's only worse when they're exposed to heat which hard drives, well, unsurprisingly, heat up. The next screw to remove is for the access cover here. And that seems to be like a really long screw. There we go. And inside here, we have one of our RAM slots, and then we have the spot for our WAN card. Now, no, you can't fit storage into these, I believe. I don't think you could do that until the 20 era. So we're not quite there yet. Removal of the RAM module is easy as pulling it out. And this is a two gigabyte stick that we'll just put down there. Now the next order of business, of course, is gonna to be to remove the keyboard. Now to do that, we're gonna remove all of the keyboard uh, screws which are all clearly labeled with pictograms. So we have one here under the cover. And that was one of the screws as well that was holding down the drawer. Is it really just those two? Are we gonna be uh, that lucky that it's that few, I wonder? All right, well, we'll turn this thing over and see what happens. We have removed a significant amount of weight from this thing, so it is a bit wobbly. And speaking of wobble, we can see the keyboard shift, so we know that it's ready to be removed. And we're just gonna reach our fingers under there to gently pop that out. And the best way is going to be to pull the keyboard forward. 
and reach in there and unplug that ribbon cable. Now with the keyboard removed, we can gain access to the remainder of the components, including the Wi-Fi card, which is hanging out right there. And then if we move this shield here, we can remove the final uh, RAM chip. That's another two gigs. And we get a really good look at how the superstructure uh, has changed. This thing is exceptionally rigid. I am pushing down on that rather firmly and there is very little uh, to no flex. Turning our attention over here to the cooling solution, which is a bit on the small side. Uh, if we wanted to remove this, it is a matter of spinning out that screw, undoing these four screws, and you can just barely wiggle this heat pipe out of the way and by doing so, replace a socketed CPU. Now, keep in mind there weren't a whole load of CPUs that were meant to work with this thing, but it is nice to see nonetheless that all of those parts are removable and serviceable. The last thing to remove here would be the palm rest, and removing the palm rest usually will give you access to things like the fingerprint reader, the touchpad, of course, and then the Bluetooth module is normally stored under one of the two sides of the palm rest. But that is pretty much everything that we would expect to see in this unit. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a quick pause, reassemble this, and then we can turn it on and see what performance is like. All right, with everything back together, let's go ahead and power this on. And you know what? That is pretty darn impressive for an original Core i series CPU. And there is something to be said about it. So even running the lowest tier CPU, the i5 520M, only four gigabytes of RAM, uh, that's still a pretty speedy little startup. And there is something to be said that if you are looking for a budget uh, computer that's got a decent return on value for money. This is the 1440 by 900 panel. There is something still to be had in the T410 line. You can really load these things up with storage between the uh, standard two and a half inch bay. And I'm quite certain that you can get a hard disk drive caddy for the ultra bay slim slot. Plus of course the express card, uh, Think Mod adapter if you really wanted to uh, spend an awful lot of money to look kit this thing out with drives, you know, you certainly could do it. Um, it would give you lots of storage, good productivity. You do have a web camera, although it's not going to be anything, you know, super exceptional. But as you can see, the machine is responsive to uh, all series of different tasks. Again, not the worst camera I've seen. <laughs> a lot of better ones out there, but in a pinch, it works. And that's really what you want a ThinkPad, especially in this price bracket, to be. You're strapped for cash, you need a good computer, the 410 is still going to do you A-OK, -okay, especially if you can load a copy of Windows 10 on it, or Linux, any kind of modern operating system. Once again, I want to thank YTGuy2010 for the donation to the channel so I could be able to bring you uh, this fantastic example of what was a solid step forward from the T400. And if you do have any questions or stories about your time with the T410, please put them in that comment section down below. And as always, I would encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So the next time I feature a rock solid ThinkPad like this, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.